Oh boy, I've got to dress up nice and spiffy for one of my favorite people in all of history. This episode's about Frederick Douglass. From one bow tie guy to another, thank you for having me. There are five big ideas I want you to take away from this video about Frederick Douglass. First, you should know that Frederick Douglass was born into the institution of slavery. And second, you should know that Frederick Douglass eventually escaped from the institution of slavery. The third thing you should know about Frederick Douglass was that he is a prolific writer and speaker. The fourth thing that you should know about Frederick Douglass was that he is a conductor on the Underground Railroad. And the fifth thing you should know about Frederick Douglass is that he was friends with Abraham Lincoln. Frederick Douglass was born in 1818 in the town of Tuckahoe in Talbot County, Maryland. According to custom, Frederick was separated from his mother at birth. He lived with his grandmother in her slave cabin. He would never learn the identity of his father. When Frederick Douglass was 12, Mrs. Ald, who Frederick called Mrs. Sophia, began to teach him the alphabet. However, slaves were forbidden to learn how to read and write, and when Hugh Ald found out, he put an end to the lessons. Slaves were not allowed to read and write. It was against the law. When Frederick was only six years old, he began working in the field. His clothing was roughly made, and his food was usually coarse, cornmeal mush. In his autobiography, Frederick Douglass wrote of Edward Covey, his cruel master who tore off his clothes and lashed him until he had worn out his switches. And he also said that there was no getting away from Covey. He was underneath every tree, behind every stump, in every bush, and at every window on the plantation. The thoughts of being a slave for life began to bear heavily upon my heart. Covey was notorious for his fierce and savage disposition. Among Frederick's duties on the plantation, under the strict and watchful Covey, were cutting wood and harvesting wheat, often in an intense heat. In 1837, Frederick fell in love with a free African-American woman named Anna Murray, who made a living in Baltimore as a laundress and a housekeeper. Anna was a few years older than Frederick and encouraged him in his dream to escape slavery, promising to help him with clothes and money once he was ready. In 1838, Frederick Douglass escaped and moved north. Douglas's house became a station on the Underground Railroad, which is a safe house for runaway slaves. He then spoke and lectured widely about the evils of slavery and then published a newspaper on his own, The North Star. Douglas was a powerful voice for abolition, the ending of slavery. It's true. Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass were friends. Douglas met President Lincoln in July of 1863 at the White House. It was the first of many meetings. I was never more quickly or more completely put at ease in the presence of a great man than that of Abraham Lincoln, he wrote. You know what they always say, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. I'm very thankful that Frederick Douglass stood up for equal rights for all people. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to check out our Teachers Pay Teachers store. Follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and check out our many Pinterest boards. Head on over to our YouTube channel where we have many more exciting videos. And hop on over to our blog at bowtieguyandwife.com where you can check out the latest Horton happenings.